everyone, and welcome. We're so excited to have you here today with us. My name is Carrie Garand. I am the interpretation training coordinator and also a diver at the Seattle Aquarium. And we've got a pretty special program for you today talking about perhaps one of our most iconic animals that we find right here. Uh, yep, Catherine's giving me the thumbs up, yes. Right here, not just at the Seattle Aquarium, but throughout the Puget Sound and our Salish Sea. And to help us with that, Catherine Kegel is here with us, one of our senior aquarists with the, with the cold water team. And Catherine, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, welcome everyone. Um, and my job is primary care of our cold water fish and invertebrates that live right here in the local waters. And one of those amazing animals that I get to work with is the octopus and <laughs> one of my personal favorites. I can see why, and we're gonna learn all about why today as well and get a chance to meet uh, one of the octopus that lives with us right now at the aquarium. Uh, but before we get started, just a reminder to everyone joining us that we love questions. Uh, so please do drop your questions into the chat today. We'll be doing our best to monitor those and get to as many of them as possible so we can help you to explore what you're interested in as we uh, go on a little exploration uh, around our octopus today. And then also just wanting to note that we are so excited to be able to bring programming like this and many others to all of you. Uh, we really do appreciate anyone who is interested and willing to make a donation. We're able to bring the sort of free programming with the help of those donations and truly donations of any size are incredibly helpful. So please do feel free to head over to seattleaquarium.org to make those donations. I know we've got a note in the chat already with a link to be able to do that. Or you can also do it through Super Chat today, which Super Chat's a new thing for me. I'm gonna admit a little bit new to all of that piece of it. Catherine, ha ha have you ever done a Super Chat before? I haven't, and I clearly am missing out. <laughs> well, we have that option today as well. So either way, again, thank you so much uh, for all of you that are that are able to do that. We really do appreciate it. And we're so excited to be able to keep bringing programming like this to so many people all across the world. So I think with that, are we ready, Catherine? I think we are. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's meet our giant Pacific octopus. And not just any giant Pacific octopus. Who is this that lives right here at the Seattle Aquarium? So this is actually Kraken, who, as you said, is one of our current octopuses here at the Seattle Aquarium. And he's just kind of hanging out on the side there. And, and here we are getting to know a little bit about what Kraken might be eating for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. This is a little variety of food. Um, so what, what are they getting and, and how often are we feeding them throughout the day? Yeah, so we feed our octopuses once a day. Um, we try as closely as we possibly can to mimic their natural diet that they find out in the wild. So while they're in the care of humans, we do our best to kind of match that diet. So you could see the crab that we were offering. There's also clam that I held up. Um, there was some shrimp. Um, and then those are a couple different types of fish species that we offer them as well. So they get a variety and it changes every day. Uh, seems, you know, pretty opportunistic feeders take advantage of what's plentiful, what's abundant. And at the aquarium, they're going to get that food in a variety of ways. It looks like you have a bunch of different uh, tools there um, that help us to get that food to the octopus in a in a in an octopus friendly way. Yeah. So these guys are natural hunters in the wild. They're hunting live food. Obviously, we feed them pre-frozen food. So we use different types of tools to get the food down to them. Um, they're not always in a convenient spot in the exhibit to feed, but we do our best to get it down and kind of be a little more like they would be hunting in the wild. Um, you can also see me kind of using different types of enrichment items there. Um, that's another option for us to put food inside of those objects and it kind of creates more of a mental stimulation for them and mimics that hunting and that kind of manipulation behavior that they would do in the wild. 
Uh, so an enrichment item is almost like, like if I were to do a crossword puzzle or I love doing Sudoku, uh, yeah. so something like that where I'm having to think about it a little bit, um, sort of sort of like a, a toy or a puzzle for them. Yeah, absolutely. It's something to do mental stimulation and then again, highlight those natural behaviors and bring that out um, that they would be doing out in the wild. It's something we can do to highlight those while they're in the care of humans. And we can see here Kraken being offered that very delicious Dungeness crab, uh, all sustainably harvested. So if anybody out there is a seafood fan, you're definitely in good company if you're hanging out with Kraken. And uh, no hesitation here, Catherine. It looks like Kraken was hungry that day. <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah, they pretty much, as soon as that food hits the water, they pretty much know what it is. And then because of all of those suckers, that's where their taste buds are. They can taste that food as it comes in. And obviously crab being one of his favorite food items, he's going to grab that right away. Oh, I love that. So uh, one of his favorite food items. So do we see that, that Kraken or other octopuses that have lived with us at the aquarium have different food preferences or like a favorite food? I would say we do. Some animals just don't like certain food options and you know that's okay they get to make those choices and um you never know why but some usually we don't have any hesitation with crab but you know they might not like a certain fish spe species we give them or they might not like clam that much so those are just kind of the options that they get to choose from Awesome. Oh, uh, we can see uh, that 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 crab essentially has disappeared. Kraken's really wrapped around it, and you know, while they're eating, there's a lot going on there that we can't see that's happening underneath those eight arms, uh, underneath all that webbing in between their arms. W where where is the crab, and what's going on? <laughs> yeah. So um, we actually get to see more of what they would be doing in. The aquarium than we would out in the wild. Normally they're going to take that food right back to the den and they're going to eat while they're in their den. Um, but their mouth is on, you know, in the center of all of those arms. So they would normally catch that prey. They would immobilize that prey and then kind of close their arms around it and use all of those little suckers to slowly take that apart and get at the meat inside. Uh, and you said immobilize their prey. How are they immobilizing their prey? So they do have a toxin that they can release that's going to basically paralyze their prey. They're soft-bodied animals. They don't want to be damaged by a, a you know, a, a pinching crab or a, a shrimp that's trying to jet away or a fish. So that's what they would use to kind of help um, immobilize and kill their prey. We can really see a great shot of Kraken using those suckers, those those crab legs kind of moving closer and closer to his mouth underneath those eight arms. And at the same time, we can really get this up close shot of another part of Kraken's body. Um, you can see that sort of gentle motion, this opening and closing, yep. and that's Kraken breathing. Yep. Nice. So he's got two slits on either side of his mantle, which is that big sack that hangs off the back of the body. And there you can really see it. And then that little opening right there is the siphon where everything comes out. So he takes a big gulp of, wa of water in, there's gills at the bottom there that are pulling the oxygen out of the water. And then everything else, when he exhales, comes out through that siphon. Oh, another part of Kraken I'm noticing is Kraken's eye. And we get this comment uh, often at the aquarium that it almost looks like like, like Kraken is watching you if, if you visited the aquarium and you've been able to get up close with these animals. Um, how how well can octopus see? And, and is, and is Kraken, are Kraken and I like having a staring competition when I go say hello in the morning? I just have to say, I don't think you're ever going to win that staring contest, but you're more than welcome to try. <laughs> um, yes, they, he's got really good vision. So they can see us through the acrylic. They've got good vision that helps them hunt during the night, hunt during the day if they're out. Um, they are colorblind, so they don't see in color. Um, but that vision is still very good. So um, they're also just naturally curious animals. So when we do have people coming up and walking by the acrylic, they are kind of checking you out. Are you doing something fun? Do I want that? Do I want to see? Um, so very much are they able to kind of interact with us through the acrylic. That's wonderful. I just saw a question pop up and a great reminder for anybody who might be joining us, please do drop your questions uh, into the chat there. We would love to answer them as we move along today. And we're wondering, can octopus hold their breath or, or the equivalent? What, what would that be for an octopus? Mm -hmm. 
So probably the equivalent for an octopus holding their breath would be coming out of the water. So octopuses do um, do spend a little bit of time out of water, especially when they're younger, if they're living in a tide pool. Um, we also will transport them sometimes and we have to get them out of the water for a little bit. Um, so they do have an ability to hold their breath um, for a period of time. Um, but obviously their preference is to be underwater and breathing. So it's kind of similar to us. Now, every time I watch this video, I'm like, oh my goodness, what just happened? It just is such a striking color difference that we just saw that transition from this very like reddish purple octopus to completely white. And, you know, it is, it is a hundred percent true that they are masters of, of camouflage, isn't it? Like, I mean, what, what did, what can an octopus or our giant Pacific octopus specifically do in terms of their color change? Yeah, so what you saw was that very dark white color. They can go to very dark, deep red color and kind of anything in between that that color change there. Um, and that can be for several reasons. One, based on what they're seeing and trying to hide in their environment. We've certainly seen them actually split their body in half and half being one color and half being another based on what they're seeing out of their eyes. Um, you can also see that color change depending on what they're doing. So when they're um, resting or relaxed, they might go more pale in color. When they're actively hunting and alert, um, they're gonna be bright red. So it can kind of base on those kind of different options. Oh, we're sort of transitioning to some really beautiful images here that that show us the life cycle of an octopus. We, we were visiting with Kraken, who I believe uh, is right around two years old or so, maybe maybe getting closer to three. Yeah, he's getting a little closer to three. And, and that's getting closer to the end of their life cycle. And so we were able to see in those images some eggs that a female had laid out in the wild. Um, and we help in that, or we, we, we do have an opportunity to sort of help in that process when an octopus comes to live with us at the aquarium, they might, how, how long are they often uh, with us in, in, in the exhibit space? So we generally keep them about six months to a year um, because we find them locally, um, we have the state's approval to release them back to where we collect them. It's an awesome opportunity for us. So when they do hit that end stage of their life where they're ready to mate, we are able to do a release like you're seeing in the video right now. Um, and we'll take them back to their habitat and let them complete that life cycle out in the wild. And this is some beautiful footage that was taken uh, just right near the Seattle Aquarium itself, being able to release those octopuses back to the wild to finish out that last part of their life cycle to be able to find a mate of their choice and hopefully lay and guard those eggs successfully until they hatch. And if I'm not wrong, Catherine, that's you cruising alongside that octopus. <laughs> That is me, yeah. This is another one of my favorite parts of my job is getting to, one, release the octopus, and then two, get to be down there with that animal and kind of follow it for a little bit while they are exploring out in the wild looking for their next home. <laughs> oh, this might be sort of a, a nebulous question, but what is that like? You know, for many of us, we may not uh, have the opportunity to explore underwater, you know, and, and to venture into the very chilly waters of the Puget Sound. Um, what's it like to be just hanging out with an octopus exploring along the bottom of the ocean? Yeah, I mean, they're pretty mesmerizing. I mean, these animals are so graceful underwater and just their movements and the way that they kind of interact with their environment. And I'm just this big clunky diver behind it. But um you just kind of just are so fascinated by these animals. It's so cool to be able to be a part of that with that animal um, and have that animal not be afraid of us, but just out there doing its normal thing. And so it's a really fun, cool opportunity. And I know you've gotten to do it too as well. So it's it's certainly a highlight of our job. It, it definitely is. The, 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 the handful of times I've been able to be in, in the background, usually, uh, it's been a lot of fun to watch because you get moments like this where we really start to see some of that, you know, curious nature almost uh, of our octopus as, as they are exploring. I know earlier you mentioned those, those suction cups and how, how they taste for food, um, but 
they're they're tasting all along the way, aren't they? Yes, absolutely. I certainly would not want to be an octopus and touch and taste everything that I touch. Um, but these guys really, it's really important for them. Um, it allows them to know what's going on around um, the world and the environment around them. It helps them find food. Um, it helps them detect predators and things like that. So it's an important function for them. And um, you know, they've got eight arms and there's a lot of information coming from all of those arms and those suckers up into their brain. And I'm just looking back over our comments in the chat here. And another question that came up a, a, a moment ago that I want to get to is, you know, do they hang out with you during the release? Like, you know, you're, you're almost like this little pair moving along. Uh, how, what is that like? You know, actually, I don't really think they care that much about us. Um, we've certainly had animals um, pretty much go right away to hunting when we release them. We've seen them certainly grab a snack on the way. Um, I think that they, um, they're they used to our presence at this point, so we're just kind of in the background for them. And um, we really just try and stay out of their way, and they just can kind of go around and do what they need to do while they're... Um, <laughs> Well, do, do, doing what an octopus does, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> exactly. They really do. We get to see that, like, kind of slow crawling along the ocean floor, and and just noting, you know, it, it's hard not to concentrate on the octopus in this uh, video here. But this is happening just right in our local waters. It is kind of cool to get this glimpse underneath uh, the Seattle Aquarium, what life is like uh, just in our own underwater neighborhood. Um, and thinking about these animals being a local species, we do also think about how their population is doing. What is some of the research that the Seattle Aquarium is doing with our local population of giant Pacific octopus? Yeah, absolutely. So we do um, an annual count. Um, we ask um, the dive community to go out and help us count these animals. This um, count can't actually give us the total number of octopuses in the sound, but it gives us a rough idea of what is going on. So, um, so as far as we can tell, their population seems to be doing well. But um, as our oceans are getting more impacted by humans, these guys are going to be impacted as well. So even though they are doing well right now, they are still a very keystone species that are going to help be an indication of how these oceans are doing. Because um, as our oceans get more acidic and the humans have greater impact on that, we're going to see more effects on them. That's a wonderful thing uh, to keep in mind is just our connection to that local ecosystem, no matter where we are, all of our waters are connected around the entire world. And so really thinking about having healthy waters uh, is helping to have a healthy home for these animals, uh, as well as that sea cucumber and little squished up plumos anemone that are on, uh, taking a moment in the spotlight there uh, in the video. So a great reminder to just be mindful of that impact on, on our local waters. Uh, thank Thank you so much for that, Catherine. Uh, I am just looking over our questions again. Please do drop any questions you have into the chat. We have just a, a few more minutes, I believe, as we continue to get to know our giant Pacific octopus a little bit more. And one thing that is my favorite about them, we've talked a lot about their, their ability to change their color, but I feel like we really can see their ability to change their skin as well, that texture specifically. So um, this octopus, it's got, it's like got little, little bobbles all over its mantle and little nubbins and folds. Yeah. Um, how are they able to control that? Yeah. So they um, have just similar to how they can change their color. They can change that texture of the skin by, contracting and relaxing the muscles so that's going to give them that texture that you're seeing and they can go very smooth they can be very bumpy and again that's trying to mimic the environment around them so obviously the ocean floor is is not flat and there's lots of structures and things around for them to hide in and so by being able to make themselves more bumpy they can look like a rock or part of a log or something like that and that helps them hide again these guys don't want to fight um, they, they're pretty soft bodied, so they'd rather flee or hide than get in any kind of an altercation with another predator. 
So a few last moment questions here. Thank you so much, everybody, for dropping those in. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit, if we were to come to visit the Seattle Aquarium, which we are open right now, we've got a great option. Uh, if you head to seattleaquarium.org to purchase your tickets in advance and also get some pretty wonderful discounts if you do a little planning ahead. So do check that out. But who might we see in terms of octopus at the Seattle Aquarium? Right, um, so currently we do have Kraken and Kraken is in our main octopus exhibit in our um, Life on the Edge exhibit. So you can see him and he is weighing just over 57 pounds. So he's on the, the larger side for <laughs> our dive Pacific octopuses. We also have Inkjet who is down in our Puget Sound Fish Gallery. Um, Inkjet is a much smaller version of a giant Pacific octopus weighing in about five pounds now. So she's got a lot of growing to do, but she's just a smaller version. Um, and then we also have, um, if you go into our tropical exhibits, we've got a day octopus and we also have cuttlefish, which is another type of species of cephalopod that are related to octopuses. So lots of cool cephalopods that you can come see. Definitely. And thinking about the scope, we talked about releasing them. So they might only be with us at the aquarium for, you know, six to nine months. Um, how many octopuses might we have throughout the year? You know, if we're, we're coming and visiting multiple times, um, how many octopuses might we run into? That's a good question. Um, it all depends on the animals. So um, they really drive when they get released. So we're always constantly monitoring them. But you would probably see two to three different um, individual animals throughout the year on display. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, everybody, uh, for all those great questions. Ooh, I think we've got one more. I'm going to grab that very last question that I saw. Um, have you ever seen an octopus find another one while, while diving in the sound? Like come across another octopus? I have actually we've seen some interactions again they're not social animals so they're not necessarily hanging out um but um they can compete for den they can compete for resources um and sometimes when they're out wandering around they've certainly um will come across each other so we have especially at night when they're active and they're hunting and they're out and about i have definitely seen two animals just kind of giving each other the eyeballs and then looking at us and then looking at each other so um that's another really cool interaction to see them just kind of like, okay. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Catherine, for all your insight and sharing your experiences today with us. It's been wonderful. Uh, I feel like I always learn a little bit more about octopus every time I sit and talk to you. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, Thank you everybody for joining us today. We've really appreciated your questions. It's been a lot of fun watching the, the chat as well. Um, we do hope if you like this program, feel free to hit the thumbs up like button uh, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel um, so that you can be ready for some uh, more programming coming up. I know we have another one, uh, Lightning Talks Sea Otters this time, another fan favorite for sure. That's going to be happening on April 22nd. So keep that in your calendars. Uh, and until then, another thank you for anybody who uh, was able to donate or would like to donate. Um, you can head over to seattleaquarium.org. Again, really donations of every size are incredibly important and appreciated for us to be able to keep doing uh, this great programming. So, ooh. I see, I love it. I love, I see these comments, otters. I think we, we've got some excitement for the otters coming up. That's wonderful. All right. Again, a huge thank you to everybody out there for joining us today. We had a lot of fun. We hope you had fun too. And thank you, Catherine. Absolutely. Thanks everyone. All right. We hope to see you soon. Bye.